everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this week I'm going to be talking about my experience during my first week of university. You guys really enjoyed my chatty get to know me video last week so I'm going to be pretty chatty in this one too and hopefully you'll learn something from it. I've also worked out a video schedule so I'm going to be doing two videos a week, one of which will be kind of like a main video like this one and one of which will be a vlog which will happen maybe over the course of three days rather than just one day so you get to know a little bit of the inside gossip as well. I'm also hoping to alternate my videos, so the main video as we'll call it, will one week be university focused or school focused or something like that and the other one will be more li li cannot speak today. And one of them will be more lifestyle focused. Okay so the first thing I wanted to talk about is obviously the move out because that's the first thing that happens when you embark on your journey to university. Um, which is, so my experience was pretty chaotic I would say. I had already packed everything because I'm such a pre-packer, pre-organiser, have everything written down in lists of what I wanted to pack. So I boxed everything up into suitcases because we have quite a few so that it would be easier to put it in the car. Then on the morning of, so Sunday I moved up, we packed it all into the car, did a bit of a game of Tetris, my sister came with me and my mum. And my sister was sat in the back, so bless her, she was stuck between, like, I don't know, some shelves and an another suitcase. It was probably very painful going around corners, but she dealt with it, which was good, because my mum wanted her to entertain her on the way back when I wasn't there. So my recommendations for the move out is be organised, have it in easy boxes so you don't have to do a million trips when you get there up and down the stairs or the lift. Um, and pack early so that it's not last minute and you don't have to rush on the day because obviously it's already a big day, it's very emotional and everything. You don't want any extra stress. My move out was especially emotional because I had to say goodbye to my boyfriend and my stepdad and everything like that, which is a big deal. Obviously London is quite far from Bournemouth, it's like two and a half hour drive. Um, so yeah, it was a bit scary and obviously that is very emotional, especially when you get there. But I wanted to talk to you about the move in. So you usually, in my case at least, we pulled up into the car park of the accommodation and you're allowed to park there for like two hours or something. You're not allowed to stay for very long because obviously people are coming in and out all moving in and there's a lot of people, especially if you're at a student village like I was. So it was quite handy having it in suitcases because it meant we could wheel it up rather than having to carry it all because I did take a lot of stuff which was very heavy and what we did was once we got up to my room we would unload all of the suitcases and then take the suitcase back down for my mum to take home with her. You also meet your, like, I don't know what they're called. You have students that are second years that live in the halls, well I did at my accommodation at least, and they kind of show you around, show you to your room, make sure you're all settled in, that kind of thing, just to make the transition a bit easier and so that you know at least the one person in your halls. So she was very nice and she showed me to my halls where I could unpack what I wish I had done though, which is what we did on the way out, was super cheeky. Basically, under my accommodation there's a Sainsbury's literally built into my accommodation. Um, and my mum, on the move out, she thought she was so clever. It did work really well, to be fair. She stole one of the cages, like one of the trolleys from Sainsbury's, and we took it up to my room and piled everything in it. And we cleared out my room in two trips, I think, down to the car. Because obviously you can fit a lot more in the crate than you can carry. So that would be a very good idea if you had some sort of trailer or something like that. Just to save you a bit of extra time. So once I had unpacked all of my things, I started kind of a little bit to decorate. Just put stuff where it needed to be. Whilst my mum and my sister brought up the rest of my stuff, which was very nice of them. And then they had to leave, which was so scary. I don't know why, I'd been fine the whole way up to the journey. And then I realised as soon as they left... That was it. I was in. I was like, there's no going back after that. So it was super, super scary. And I did cry. I'm going to be honest. I cried because me and my mum are like best friends. Seriously, we get on so well. So it was really sad. But what you have to remember is that it's an amazing journey that you're about to embark on. Like, university is such a good experience and you're going to make so many friends. And everyone is in the same boat. That's what really grounded me, I think. Everyone was alone. Everyone was like missing home and everything. So you just have to find comfort in each other's sadness, aloneness, I don't know, you're all experiencing the same thing so you instantly have something in common with the other people you're living with. So yeah, you've got something to talk about and that's just all you need to remember that you're okay, everyone does it at some stage, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> I then wanted to talk to you about meeting your flatmates because in my case it wasn't very conventional I wouldn't say. 
I expected to get there and everyone would be singing and dancing in the kitchen and having a great time and everyone would already be friends because I moved in on the Sunday um, and most of them moved up on the Saturday. But I found out after bumping into one of my flatmates in the halls that she hadn't met anyone in the flat. Even though she knew they were all there, she hadn't met anyone. Which I thought was so weird and I knew that if something didn't happen it would stay that way. We would just all live in our own bubbles, you know. So I took the courage to go and knock on everyone's door and ask them if they wanted to have a cup of tea in the kitchen. Everyone said yes, despite two of them not liking tea, which obviously demonstrates how people wanted to get to know each other. Everyone was fed up. They were waiting for someone to make the first move and it just so happened that it was me. <laughs> so I brought out my tea bags and the sugar and we just had some cup of tea, we sat around and we talked about everyone's A-level results, where they were from, what they were doing and kind of got to know each other as you would in any circumstances when you're first meeting someone. From that leads on to the first night, so obviously by now you've done your shopping or you've bought enough food with you that you don't need to, which is what I did, um, and everything's set up and you're kind of feeling more settled. So moving on to the first night, usually you go out. <laughs> it is the start of freshers, you're officially in uni and I know loads of universities offer like package deals where you go to so many nights a week and you have a band to make it cheaper or something. Greenwich didn't offer this, they were actually pretty bad with nightlife. I know it's London but obviously you'd have to travel into central London if you wanted a night out. There was only one place in Greenwich where you could really go if you wanted to have a drink and a laugh or whatever. And I can't remember exactly but I think we did go. I think it was me and two of my flatmates because all of the others were doing their own things. Um, and she might have been three of my flatmates. But yeah, we had pre-drinks in the kitchen, played some cards, played some drinking games, and then we all walked over to the main bar of Greenwich, it's called Belushi's. So we all went there and had a really nice night and bonded and got to know each other's silly side, which you always do when you're on a night out. So that was really fun. I would say pace yourself. I know it's your first night and you're so excited and you want to get drunk and have a good time, if you drink, that is. Um, but you do have the next six or seven nights. So pace yourself, you don't want to be so hungover on Monday or Sunday that you can't go out that night and everyone ends up having a really good time and making memories without you. So yeah, I would say pace yourself. Get to the point where you're, you know you're going to have a good time but you're not going to throw up. I then wanted to talk to you about the daytime because everyone goes on about how fun Freshers Week is, which it is in the, at night time I'd say. It's really fun past six o'clock because you'll go out and stuff but during the day Greenwich especially Greenwich was just really bad with freshers week they didn't organize anything pretty much um so yeah during the day it was a bit boring because usually in your first week it's a reading week where you don't have any reading because you haven't started your course but um you just have the week off to settle in I guess oh my gosh do you mind so during the day it can get pretty boring, so I would suggest going on day trips with your flatmates just to find out what the local area is like, try local restaurants and things so you get to know your favourites and go sightseeing, I mean especially in London it was quite fun to go out and have a look around and take some touristy photos whilst you're still in the new phase of London or wherever you are. But definitely keep yourself occupied because if you don't you'll find yourself alone in your room, getting bored and upset that you're not at home. <laughs> Because especially in my accommodation we didn't have any sofas or anything in the lounge or whatever. In the lounge? In the kitchen. Um, so it was either you went out or you're alone. <laughs> so pick the one you want and make the most of it. I then wanted to talk to you about the first weekend. This is very much like the daytime. You have to keep yourself busy. Um, and it's also a great chance to have people come up that weekend to come and see you. So I had my boyfriend come up because that's the kind of girl I am. Can't go five days with my boyfriend. Or you can have your dad or your mum like come see how you've settled in or maybe a friend that's not going to uni because they can experience the nightlife as well and be part of, well maybe not your parents then, but they can experience the nightlife as well and be part of your freshers experience which is really fun because then you can talk about it with them and you can both share the experience and the memories. It also gives you a bit of home comfort as it's someone you know, someone you're friends with um, and yeah it just helps you to make the transition because you've got something to look forward to as well during the week if you're feeling a little bit homesick. I then wanted to talk about first lecture which isn't during the first week, it's usually on the Monday after the first week and everyone is really scared about their first lecture, I don't know why, it's such this huge thing obviously because that's it, I mean you're in university, that is the start of your education 
or so you think, but usually your first lectures, so during pretty much the first week, is this is what we're going to learn. You don't learn anything in your first week usually, they just talk about the course, the exam, what's going to be expected of you, deadlines and things like that, just to get you into the feel of university so you know what to expect so they don't swing you a curveball along the way because they've already told you what's going to come. I know from my experience of my first lecture we all went into a big room, like to the lecture hall, and we were all given different coloured slips which meant what tutor we were in because you'll also meet your tutee that week um, which will follow you through to the whole of your time at university so you kind of bond with that person and they will go to person if you have any problems they're your mentor kind of so if you're feeling homesick or you don't want to be there or you're having problems making friends or anything they're really good with helping you with that and what I would say is even if you don't know anyone on your course do not sit by yourself because usually people stick to their seats I don't know why like, people float, obviously, but a lot of people decide that's where they're sitting, these are now their friends, and you're not part of it. So I would suggest either talking to someone before you get in there, like, on the way, if they're walking the same way, or if they're going to the same building or something, or asking someone, just point blank, when you get in there, if there's three girls sat together, or some people that look like they're having a lot of fun and that you think you would gel with, just get, literally go ask, oh, do you mind if I sit here? Because I can guarantee you they are not going to turn around and be like, no. They're going to let you sit there. Even if they don't like you and they're not going to talk to you, at least you're sat with someone and you've made a connection with someone. But, but try and talk to them. I mean, you don't want to just sit there and be bored. I mean, obviously you have to listen to your lecturer. Lecturer. I can never say that word. You have to listen to your lecturer, but you can have a little introduction, get to know each other on the side, um, which is what I did. And I found the best way to make friends, like the friends that really stuck, turned out to be the people you did presentations with. So I don't know if it will be the same for your course, but for my course we had to do two or three or four presentations, there were quite a few. Um, and obviously the first one you don't really know that many people, so you're doing a presentation with people you don't know. But they tend to be the people that you get along with because you learn most about them because you spend the most time with them. So I would also make sure to pick your teams wisely and learn from it if that makes sense. Then who's good for you, who's bad for you, who's got the same goals as you and who you get on with. But yeah that's all I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope this has helped and you have enjoyed learning about my experience and what to expect from your first week at university. I'm also posting a vlog this week so look forward to that. So if you have enjoyed this video and it's helped you out hit the like button and subscribe down below for my future vlogs and other videos. All of my links are down below as well if you wanted to check those out. And I've also been getting a lot of requests. I have seen them all and I'm very grateful for them so if you have any more leave them in the comment section and I will definitely get around to filming those videos for you. Bye!